Hello YouTube. Uh, oh, I thought we'd sit down. Uh, right, uh, I've got this. I'm doing a comparison here of an Epiphone EBO and a Gibson EBO. Right, this is a really stupid comparison and it's totally not fair. Right, just to start off with, um, this Gibson is 1968 and this Epiphone is more modern than that obviously it's uh, 2001 right uh, I'm playing through that PV keyboard amp which because of the bass I was I would normally just play through the soft tech it's fine but because it's a bass it doesn't really do the, the low boomy stuff especially with an EBO um, and there will be rattles from everything in here rattles when you play the bass through it so there will be rattles which aren't actually coming from the bass or the amp they're coming from the telly and things in the walls and all oh, the windows everything just shakes when I play the bass so there will be a bit of rattling so it's really completely pointless also I'm comparing I really don't know how much I know I can't know how much this is worth but I really don't know how much this is worth I've never I've, I've never actually looked up another one um, I've had this for 10 years and I've had this for two weeks uh, Right, so to start with, I suppose I'll do the Epiphone. I had one of the very first Epiphone ones ever made. Um, I used to have my first band. I had a, a guitar, an Epiphone SG400, and I absolutely loved it. I just wished you could get an SG bass because they didn't make them. You couldn't get Gibson ones and you couldn't get Epiphone ones. The only chance of getting one was to pick one up from the 60s or the 70s, um, and they were a thousand pounds or whatever. Uh, then, as soon as I saw one of these, I was straight into the shop and I traded in my Aria Pro 2 ZZ Deluxe Bass for one of these. And the serial number, I can even remember, it was S98, because it was 1998. It was 0000000000, and I think it was 12. It was 11. It was something like that. It was like the 11th one ever made. It was the first one in Scotland, because the guy in the shop said, that just came in this morning. We're the first shop that's got one in Scotland. I was like, right, so, kind of... I used it, I gigged with it for many years. Um, I bought this this exact one just a couple of weeks ago uh, to do it up and sell it because it, it was covered in stickers and the one of the you'll notice it's got a black bridge because one of the saddles was missing from it and there was no there wasn't really any other way of you can't buy the saddles individually. I'm actually thinking of selling the three that were on it on eBay, you know, for a tenner each or something like that, just to try and recoup some money from it, because you, you have to buy the whole thing. This uh, bridge is an Epiphone, but it's from a Thunderbird, apparently. Thunderbird? Thunderbird bass. Yeah, so it's exactly the same, but it's black. Um, you'll notice the knobs. Uh, I'm, I, I think when I sell it, I'll give it the option. I quite like them. I just put them because they were sitting there. I took them off another guitar. Um, they're red instead of the normal ones. Uh, and, as I said, it's only had three strings on it. There was a saddle missing and one of the machine heads was missing as well so if you look at it i'll try and put it you can see that they don't match so you've got the two epiphone the two epiphone machine heads and then you've got the two ones which actually got i uh, came on my washburn scavenger base um so they're slightly different i figured that if you're buying one of these bases it's not immaculate anyway it's second hand and i figured that it wasn't it fu obviously function wise it doesn't make any difference it's the only real the only real problem is is five mil longer these ones than these ones which it might really annoy you but I didn't figure it was £25 different or whatever it was to buy machine heads I wouldn't get £25 more for the base so there we go uh, that's really that uh, this is all mahogany I think I would think um, it's a bolt on neck um, that's a big thing with guitars even though I don't think it makes any difference um, don't argue with that though I'll just say if you think it makes a difference, it makes a difference. If you don't, then that's fine by me as well, but I don't think it does. Yep. And then, so, then there's this one, which is, that's not gonna sit there, I'll sit it there. This is, I believe, from 1968. Uh, I would have said it was red, but when you see it next to that one, it's not red, it's brown. Um, this is mostly original as well. Uh, it's got the original pickup. It's got the original tuners. It's been, it's 40 years old, 50 years old, whatever it is. Um, the only, I, I couldn't get anything out of the serial number, 519395. It didn't really make any sense, but I'm looking up all the different models because they changed sort of every year or every two years. I think they, they had an option. It was either 6875 or something like that. Um, I 
if you look up that kind of bridge, that kind of pickup, then you're there. This is at one point had a bit routed out for what looks like it used to have a strap pickup in it, um, and that uh, pit guard isn't original either. But the the bones of it are there, so it's this this is this is a set neck. If you think it makes a difference, yeah, we bit of buckle rash there in the back. Kind of looks like a continent, maybe Antarctica or something like that. Um, I've had this for years and years. Uh, I fell over when I saw it. I've always wanted one of these. Now, of course, they make a Gibson SG base. Or they, I don't know how many years ago they did it, but when I bought this, the only option was well, when I first started in a band, the only option was to buy an old one like this if you wanted an SG base or a copy or something like that. And uh, then after that, the only option was to buy the Epiphone when it came out. And then a couple of years ago, they brought out the Gibson SG base. I don't think they called it an EBO, I think they called it an SG base. Right, so I'll just plug it in. Um, if you look at the headstocks, it's not an exact copy, but I, I think SG's changed, or EBO's changed a lot in the 60s anyway, because like the 66 one's a different shape, and you know they moved them about, so I don't know. The headstocks ain't identical. This is a much smaller headstock than this. The scale length is the same. The scale length isn't the same. That's interesting. I bet no one knew that. I've, honestly, I haven't looked this up, but that's... Um, have I got a tape? Just out of interest. They're not the same. This, this is a longer scale than that one. This is... Oh, 30 and a half inch and this is 30 inch so there you go breaking news Gibson's 31 inch Epiphone's 30 inch so there's a difference I don't know what other as I said EBO's changed all the time so maybe the, the, the one that came out a year after it was different so that's actually going to affect the tone that's, that's, that's a, I don't know what percentage that's a, that's a fair difference between the two um, They've both got, I think they were called Sidewinder pickups. I, should have I wish I'd taken a photo of this one. I had it, I had it to bits to clean it. And then uh, you had to tart it up a bit. Um, the pickup, look, when you take the cover off, looks amazing. It's like the size of your fist and it's got magnets stuck on it. It really does look. I mean, if someone threw it at you, it would knock you out. It's absolutely huge. Um, so this will be a bit rattly with the roof and stuff. And I've also played through a keyboard amp, which is more bassy than my guitar amp, but it's still not there. Um, EBOs sound different from P basses and the like, and the normal and what you class the normal bass. They're really thuddy. I, you sort of think there's something wrong with it, but if you try and play free or you know someone who actually uses an EBO, you can hear that that is different. selections or oh, there aren't any so it's just got one pickup volume and a tone the tone's a funny one though because it does actually have a, unlike every other guitar I've got they're both the same so that's what they do have in common normally I don't ever touch the tone control um, I, I, I would set it up on the amp if it was wrong but um, on EBO it's got a it doesn't not an unusable sound it doesn't really make it bassier it's kind of funny because it's such a stumpy bass obviously there's, there's not much i'm gonna say there's not much sustain but i mean there is sustain but it's not um Yeah, 
Um, I'll just be totally honest, there's a huge difference between the two. The, the longer scale length probably helps this one, to be honest. I didn't realize, I, I honestly just didn't, didn't think there was a difference. As soon as I strung that, I mean, I sold, when I traded, when I sold that, I must have sold that in 10, 15 years ago, probably. The one I had felt the same as that. As soon as I put strings on it and wired it up, it was like, oh, it was like going back in a time warp. Even though I've had this for 10 years, as soon as I played that one, I was like, I totally recognize this. It's exactly the same. So they've got a really good consistency over the three years that they made it. Um, that was a, made by Samic, which I believe is a desirable one. Um, yeah, there's some faults with it um, as, as a bass, which I noticed because I bought mine brand new and this is the same one. They might have sorted out by now, but see the tuners, see the metal elephant ear bits? These, these bits on the end, right? They rattle. They, they work their way loose. And what you've got to do is you've got to clamp down these two bits there like that and super glue them to stop them rattling. Because I, had, I mean, mine was new when I had it. I mean, I got this one, all, all three of the machine heads that it did have all did that. So I've now, but basically, all you just, just put super glue and it stops it rattling. It's not actually in the gears, it's just the actual metal, see the, the shaft that comes up, the actual, the metal elephant ear bit sits into a slot in the shaft and it not, it just, it's bad. So basically, if you've got one of these, if you're getting rattled somewhere, I would check. And if they wobble, just a wee bit of super glue and you'll never see it and it just stops it rattling. It doesn't affect things. Um, yeah, so I suppose uh, I put a thing on Guitar Universe on Facebook this morning saying I was going to do a, a comparison of the two and how it wasn't really fair anyway. I kind of knew that. Um, uh, the difference here being as well, I kind of love this one anyway. But even if they were identical, there would still be a huge advantage to this one because it says Gibson on it instead of saying Epiphone. This, this actually says Gibson on it as well. It says it on the Trust Road cover. Like the old, my SG400 guitar has. Because um, it, it, it's made by Gibson, I suppose. It's just made by Gibson and by Samick in Korea. This will be... I think, as well, it's, another thing that doesn't make it really that fair is I've seen the new Gibson EBO bass. In fact, as, well, as soon as I saw it, a couple of years ago, three years ago, in Guitar Guitar in Glasgow, I went, I was, it made an SG bass and I had a shot of it. And it was an awful lot more like the Epiphone than this. I think there's a, a thing. These were handmade. I mean, well, we didn't get computer controlled routing and all that stuff in 1968, so it's a handmade guitar. So I think there's probably a variance between if, I, you know, if you bought another EBO 1968, it would probably it could be significantly different from this one. You know, a different neck dimensions and you know a slightly different shape and all that because it was made by hand. Whereas Anything you buy now is is a computer CNC made. Like I mean, you can't fault Samic. They're, 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 uh, I've got a few Samic things uh, guitars kicking about, and once you know what you're looking for to tell that it's a Samic, you can tell it is. Just that the, the way the type of lacquer they use and this even the sort of wood. I mean, they, they look stunning. I mean, that's very durable. I mean, that's um, I don't even know what that's painted with. It's all scuffed and battered. Um, that, I would say this has got a thinner neck on it that way than this does. This has got a more standard neck. This is this is kind of like for people who don't want the extremes. You heard that you heard when I plugged it in. This is a big boomy beast. This kind of sounds. It's still a big boomy beast, but it's not as pronounced as this one. This one feels funny. It's a very different, but that could be because it's handmade again. I'm going right into my guitars these days and um. I've been buying ones from Japan in the 80s, which are all handmade as well. And you get ones that are sort of strange shape and they're really quirky, you know, it's got a really different sized, you know, things can be all over the place and completely different for that specific guitar. Whereas nowadays, all guitars are made to suit the most amount of people. So they all sort of sound, feel the same. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? I had a Mocking, uh, Mockingbird ST, which I think was Samic as well. It's like a, a a modern DC Rich, and it was like that. You could see that very, very similar. You could sort of just the, the, the way it was finished and everything. You know, it was good, but just it was didn't have that specialness that these have got. Um, that you get with a handmade one. Um, also, this has had 40, 50 years, whatever it is, forty-eight years. Um, maturing and getting bashed and getting played in. So that's good in this one's favour. 
as well. Faults in this one, the bridge is shit. It's not a good design bridge. It's kind of... It sits at a funny angle and it's I think it used to have a cover on it and there was wee screw holes which make me think it might have had uh, some sort of string mute back in the day. But I don't know how you could possibly want to mute you know, the strings, but I mean, that, that's what basses used to have that back then. You know, it was like a sort of rubber thing that bends up. But it, it, it sits on two pillars, but it, um, it's not really that impressive. This type of bridge is much better. It's like a, a three-point bridge. That text message. It was cool. Um, yeah, that this is a much a much better design. But because this, it's like it comes down to. I know that that this one is all messed up and it's got you know it's got like I used to have an extra pickup in it. It's got bashes and stuff on it. I don't want to ditch the bridge and put on a better one because that's the original bridge. It's stupid, I know, but I'm going to do that anyway. Um, yeah, so the thing I put on Guitar Universe there was like it wasn't a thousand pounds difference between that and that. I'm assuming that's worth. These are about two hundred pound new, and it's okay. It's got a couple alterations to it, but the colour of the bridge and the fact that the machine heads are a slightly different size doesn't affect it in any way. And I suppose you would argue that this as well doesn't really affect it. The fact that it's got a, an extra hole in it and it's a bit bashed. You know, there's, there's, there's there are stock, um, but there's a there is quite a gulf between the two. My the reason I'm doing this is my biggest hit video was a uh, I compared a seventy eight Music Master bass to a modern Squire Mikey Way bass, which is basically the same sort of thing, and they kind of came out sort of the same, really. You know, I mean, obviously the, the Fender one was better because it said Fender on it. It was thirty or forty years old as well, but it wasn't as big a difference as this. So. In conclusion, I can't really make a conclusion. There's no, there's no thing. Mate. Also, this is my baby, so I'm completely biased towards this anyway. Uh, but yes, there's a massive gulf between a 1968 EBO and a modern Epiphone one. I know a lot of people aren't going to like that. A lot of people, oh no, no, Epiphones are just as good as Gibsons. Not old ones. They're not. They might be as good. I've mean, I played some, some of the modern. I played in a modern SG, and. Can, Compared to like a, I can't remember what was that. I think it was just an SG special. So it like it actually didn't look unlike the color of that. Compared to I've got an SG special from '95, and there was a huge difference in quality. I mean Gibson have gone <coughs> since then, but then again they're also half the price. I'm pretty sure mine in '95 my Gibson SG was about 700 quid, and I think the one I looked at in Guitar Guitar was 500. So it's you know over 15 or 20 years, it's 200 pound cheaper. And you're like, well, why is it two hundred pound cheaper? It's because they spent two hundred pound less building it, and more than that because of inflation and stuff. So, yeah. So that was completely inconclusive. But I do love my EBO. They both get ancient strings on them as well. This, these were, um, these have been on it, I think, since I bought it. To be honest, so the, the strings are probably ten years old. Those ones probably aren't quite as old as that, but I didn't. Because I want to put it on eBay and sell it, um, I just took them off my Schecter. Um, that's, I know it's cheating a wee bit, but it's a base. I wasn't. It's one. Of, it's again the same with the machine heads. I didn't want to put twenty quid's worth of um, strings on it, and then sell a guitar for I don't know what I'm going to get for this. I, I'm not. Well, they're two hundred pounds. I think they're a wee bit less, maybe one hundred and eighty pounds new. So putting you know twenty five, thirty pounds worth of machine heads and twenty pounds worth of strings on it, you start going, Oh, is that make it gonna make it worth hundred and fifty pounds? And you go, right. Whereas if I get a hundred pounds for it like that, yeah, I don't know. But I mean they do look stunning. I can't you can't fault it's, it's the best looking. I've got thousands of guitars, you've seen them all, um but uh yeah. So the Epiphone one, yes it's an alright entry entry bass guitar. I used to have one. Maybe that's why I'm a wee bit biased against it because I always had a, had a terrible time with it rattling before I realised that that was what it was that was rattling. I was thinking it was all other things. It was the machine heads rattling and um, also the sort of boomy sound, which isn't for everybody. You can't, I mean, don't even bother trying to play Iron Maiden on it. You know, that sort of ding 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 ding. It doesn't, it doesn't do that. It only does the sort of boom, 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 which works. But then again, a P bass might not do. You know, there's a difference. That quite a lot to do with the short scale though but also the fact it's got the big thick humbucker pickup in it right so no conclusions yes rock on <laughs> what a pointless video eh hey <laughs>